everybody and welcome to week two of our open SAP course for supply chain management. My name is Iris Zimmermann. I'm product expert for supply chain management in SAP Business by Design. And I'm happy to lead you through week two. After Stefan has given you an overall introduction in week one about some basics in the external and internal supply chain, I will concentrate on the straightforward buying and selling side of the supply chain business process, their relevance on demand and supply planning and its logistics execution aspects on goods received and goods issue. You need the procure to pay business process to purchase inventory managed products that they are used either as input products for manufacturing or as trading goods for the order to cash sell from stock business scenario. I will start with demand planning in unit one. It deals with forecasting the customer demand. In Unit 2, we will cover supply planning that ensures that all product demand is covered with the respective supply. In Unit 3, purchasing, we, I will explain the strategic sourcing and the purchase order handling. In Unit 4, I will cover the logistics execution with the goods receipt process to the warehouse and continue directly with, with its invoice verification. The transfer to financials for payment is covered in the previous Open SAP course, SAP Business by Design Financials. In Unit 5, we will have a look at the outbound side of the supply chain that covers all stages to sell goods from stock. It entails sales quotes, sales orders, outbound delivery processing and invoicing. If you want to learn more about the payment process, please also have a look at the Open SAP Financials course. In Unit 6 Deep Dive, I will explain in detail how the system behaves for these three topics demand management, available to promise, and task management. Now let's start with demand planning. As you can see here, I have highlighted demand planning. This will help you to remember which part of the process we are currently in. The demand planning takes care of the mid or long term forecasts of the customer demand. Key idea is that you can apply statistical methods on your historic sales data to forecast the future demand. To procure or produce in advance helps to reduce the delivery time to the customer because the product is already available on stock. It is optional to use demand planning. Let me briefly explain the demand planning loop process that is visualized on the right side of the slide. It starts with the setup and control of the demand plan, with similar handled products assigned, forecast methods, time horizon, and so on. You can choose on using historical sales data from SAP Business by Design as input for the forecasting models but you also can upload those from outside. You can change or eliminate exceptional quantities before the, you run the forecasting model. You can adapt the result of the final forecast if you want. It's also possible to upload the final forecast from outside the system. Being confident with the forecast demand plan, you can release it as demand for supply planning. Before you begin the next demand planning cycle, you can roll the demand plan to the future and start preparing the next weeks or months. You might have to consider potential changes such as new or phased out products or the need for a new forecasting model. Now let's switch to the system to see some of the features I've talked to you about. So the demand planner usually works with the demand planning work center on the demand plans views. And I have prepared here one demand plan for a new product. In with edit, we see that uh, the, the period for this demand plan is, uh, is weeks, meaning that it's planned in weeks and we have a forecast horizon of four weeks in the future and a history horizon of six weeks in the past. I have enabled that for statistical forecasting and also I enabled rounding. On the scope maintenance tab, 
you would assign all the products that are handled. Similarly, I have assigned here only one product to make the demo uh, simpler. On the process settings, uh, I maintained a rolling interval of one week. This is the number of weeks that elapses before a, a demand plan is moved to the future. In the forecasting model subtab, you find all the forecasting models provided on the left side, and I have chosen three of them uh, for my purpose. Uh, I've marked the average forecasting model as a default because I would like to have constant values to be forecasted. Now I close the setup part and we, are, we go directly into the planning itself. Here on the right side on the columns you see the four weeks of um, future uh, in the future that we want to do the forecasting for. And I also can show you the weeks for the history start also represented as columns here. Yeah. Uh, for our products, we have, uh, for, for uh, our uh, one product, we have at the first uh, line here uh, the actuals, meaning it is um, holding the historic sales data from the system. And this you, with this, you usually would do the statistical forecasting. Um, since sometimes uh, you want to change those actuals in case uh, you have peaks that you want to eliminate, we can use the final actuals. So usually would, you would copy the actuals into the final actuals and use then the final actuals for statistical forecasting. In our case, uh, we don't have a, a good basis in the system uh, for our product in terms of historic sales data. So I maintained here the values directly uh, that I got from outside the system. Uh, now when we are uh, running the statistical forecast, I move to the forecasting start again to focus here on the four future weeks. And I will open up the maximal layout to run it. We see here the forecasting model is average, uh, what we defaulted. And I also will fl uh, flag here the value to copy these statistical forecast values into the final forecast later uh, so that I can change it. Here we have the same principle as for the actuals and final actuals. So I run the statistical forecast. And we see here the values uh, provided from the average model. We see also that uh, we have here decimals and I choose to have it rounded uh, before it's moved into the final forecast. I also could change here the values of the final forecast because the final forecast is then uh, released to the supply planning. So I can save that and close it. Uh, here on this list, you also see here two buttons, download and upload. This is uh, related uh, to the option that you can download the data, for example, the sales data into an Excel sheet and also you have the possibility to upload your final actuals or the final forecast from outside the system also via, uh, via Excel with those two buttons here. But since we are content with, wha with what we have done, I will release it to the supply planning. So now uh, let's have a look how uh, it's represented for the supply planner. So the supply, plan, supply planner is, um, uh, uh, has to provide 
the supply for the demand plan that we released. So that's why it shows up in his supply and demand list. So we see here below the four forecasts we have released and the, uh, the value of the week is translated into a date and it's translated into uh, the first day of the week, so in Monday. So with this, uh, the work of the supply planner, of the demand planner uh, is done and we return to the, to the slides. So in this unit, you have learned how the supply chain process steps are connected for product planning, buying and selling products. You have seen how to use historic sales data and how to apply statistical methods for demand forecasting and how to adapt it if needed. And in the end, we have released the demand planning to initiate the supply planning process. This concludes our first unit together. See you in the next one.